Merrimack TV is committed to our community. From gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of town and school board meetings, to updates on town services and projects, we aim to keep you connected. Uh, good morning, I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments, so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook. Matt, whenever you're ready. Projects. All right, well, actually, Laura, that's that's up to you. <laughs> okay, good evening, friends uh, of Merrimack. Uh, this is the Merrimack Parks and Recreation meeting. Um, oh, oh, I got the wrong page, excuse me. Oh, wow. Good evening. Start again. Rewind. Good evening, everybody. This is, I'm Laura James, and I'm here with the Merrimack Parks and Recreation Committee on Wednesday, January 20th, 2021. And we are meeting virtually at this point. I can't find my agenda, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> so um, before we begin, we are here on Zoom, and I'd like the members who are attending to introduce themselves. Again, I'm Laura James, Chairman. Anybody else? Is Christine there? Tracy? Uh, Tracy McGraw, member. Uh, Abby? Thank you, Tracy. Abby Cody, student representative. Shannon? Excellent. Shannon Barnes, school board liaison. Rick? Oh, you're muted, Rick. All right. Rick Green, your MYA liaison. And I am Rick, Rick. Rick. Director of Parks and Recreation. And then we have two guests with us here. Uh, Keyshawn, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, Keyshawn Srinivasan from Merrimack Troop 424. And Jason? Welcome. Thank you for coming. And I'm Jason Clant, uh, also with Troop 424, Keyshawn's. Uh, project. Excellent. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. Um, before Thank you for having we... us. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to find my agenda again. <laughs> um, we do not currently have a quorum, Laura, so we can okay. skip over the minutes. Skip and over so the minutes and do minute. So we'll skip those and do them next month and uh, unless Maureen comes late. And so we okay. can first up is uh, Keyshawn reporting on his project. Thank you so much. That's what I was getting to. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Okay, I'm just going to share my screen here. Thank you. Come teach me. Um, are you all able to see that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Keyshawn Srinivasan from Merrimack Troop 424, and I'm going to be talking today about my Eagle Scout project, which was an ADA compliant, handicapped accessible ramp at the day camp office at Wasserman Park. My advisor for this project is Mr. Jason Plant. Here's a picture before the project. So for those of you who might not know, this is the day camp office and nurse's office, and um, it's right across from the garden. Here are the pictures after we completed the ramp. Nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, as you can see in here, there we put handrails on there for accessibility, and we have an opening so that the existing steps can be used. The project value of this project is that the nurse's office is now accessible via this completed ramp, which is ADA compliant. So that means people in a wheelchair will have, um, will, following this code, will have access to this building. This project also allows the building to be used with the existing steps and allows access for people who cannot use the steps. So there's two access points to this building. It joins the other buildings at Washington Park for being ramp accessible. For this project, I had three fundraisers, one bake sale and two car washes. I had 10 workdays 
in which we worked countless hours to uh, build this project. The total number of hours spent on the project was 388 hours. Wow. Total amount raised for this project was $2,787.20. For materials on this project, I spent $2,284.68. For other materials, such as food and supplies, I spent $463.42. The total spent on this project was $2,748.01. The remaining funds, $39.10, and some product materials were given to the beneficiary. This includes lumber, concrete, and uh, tools such as rakes, post hole diggers, and um, a, a shovel. I also gave some stain to the beneficiary. The phases of this project are, first we had to measure out the land, which was uh, very tedious, and we had to mark exact ball at which the holes were to be to dig the holes. So first the town dug the holes with the auger, and then we uh, dug out the loose dirt and adjusted the holes to fit the sauna tubes. Then we poured concrete into the sauna tubes, and once the concrete was set, we were able to build the deck. Once that was completed, we leveled the land for the ramp, and then we built the ramp. I showed leadership uh, in many ways in this project, um, a couple of which being I debriefed workers before workdays to make sure there was a smooth uh, plan um, before the workday, and that way we were able to efficiently complete um, this project. I also organized the workdays and fundraisers so that we could have a lot of troop members um, come to it and availability throughout. I also assigned tasks based on skill and age, so the workload was distributed properly. I sought donation and help from local businesses for food and materials, and I worked with the town of Merrimack for help digging the holes as well as helping me uh, formulate my plan. I planned and managed all the work throughout this project, and most importantly in these times, I enforced the social distancing and COVID-19 guidelines. Yeah. Here are a couple pictures from our fundraisers. On the left-hand side, we have the bake sale at the Merrimack transfer station, and then the two pictures on the right-hand side was at the uh, Gulf gas station uh, in Merrimack. For the digging of the holes, the town dug the holes at first, but the auger hit some rocks along the way, and unfortunately, some of the holes were, out, um, were not perpendicular to the ground. So we had to get this post hole diggers and shovels and dig out the loose dirt as well as adjust the hole to make it perpendicular to the ground so that we were able to um, fit in the sonic tube. In total, there were 10 holes. Here's uh, some pictures of us pouring concrete. Um, the way that we went about the concrete pouring was that we split up into mini teams. I, as you can see, we had three little mini teams and then uh, we each... Uh, poured concrete in a set amount of holes, and that way we were able to get done the concrete pouring very quickly. Here's us building the deck. So after the concrete was set, we were able to put these metal post bases onto the sauna tube. After that, we put two beams on connecting the, each sauna tube to the other with um, the post base. After that, we put a double box design on top of that, which was two beams thick on each side, with perpendicular joists running across it and decking on top. These posts were secured into the box with blocking, and the design was an extremely sturdy one. As you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of this picture, oh, uh, sorry, bottom left-hand corner of this picture, um, the land is very level there, so we had to do that before we would lay these beams from the deck. So we laid these beams coming from the deck to land on the concrete pad, as you can see in a couple of these pictures. That's a lot of work. After that, we put this blocking in between each beams and then took posts and uh, put them with the post bases on the sauna tubes and then tied them all together for a very sturdy design. I learned a lot of lessons in this project. 
um, some of which being that design and measurements are extremely crucial to a project such as this. Um, it is really helpful when um, it is done correctly and first. And as I mentioned in the project phases, we did do a lot of design, uh, measurement and uh, revisions on our design for the ramp. And overall, I feel that it came out very good. I also learned that if you want a four foot hole, it would be easier to have the town dig five feet because then digging out the loose dirt would be easy. A one challenge I had through this project was that wood prices were increased exponentially due to the lumber shortage due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many people were improving their home over this time, so lumber was short for a while. Once it came back in stock, the prices were um, very high, and our original budget of 1400 for all the supplies got raised to close to 3000 I have a lot of thank yous for the various people and businesses who helped me through this project, and without them, it would not have been possible. I first want to thank Mr. Kasparius for his very clear requirements and his prompt responses, making the project very easy from that perspective. I want to thank Mr. Jason Plant for being an excellent advisor and giving me valuable advice since the beginning of this project. I want to thank Mr. Chris Fredette for his construction expertise and his project work guidance. The town of Merrimack for digging the holes on time and lending very important tools such as the post digger. Mrs. Lori Barrett, who is the operation manager at Merrimack DPW, and Mrs. Don Tumula, who is the deputy director and town engineer at Merrimack DPW. I want to thank the town council and the Merrimack Parks and Rec Committee for asking very important questions that helped me later on in the project. I want to thank all the businesses that donated towards my project, such as Costco, Panera Bread, Sal's, Pizza Hut, Domino's, Home Depot, Lowe's, Shaw's, Reed's Ferry Lumber, Lakeview Materials, Spartan Pizza, Pizza Roma, for giving food as well as materials. I want to give a huge thank you to Troop 424 for helping me throughout this project from the beginning and coming to all my work days and making this such a breeze. And I want to give a huge thanks to my family. Thank you all for listening, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Wow. Very nice job. Thank you. I, I know what that ground is like. It's all rock. <laughs> yeah, it is. there was a lot of rocks that we had to dig up. Yeah, yeah. But what a view from up there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's long overdue, so thank you. It looks wonderful. Are there any thank comments or questions from from the committee? Congratulations. That's a thank you so much. Comp in what year are you in school, Keyshawn? Keyshawn, another thank you. What year are you in school? I'm in ninth grade. I'm in ninth grade. Good for you. Thank you. Good job. Keyshawn, thank you so much. Thank you. Any other thank comments, you. questions? Yeah, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Uh, telling us. You should get an extra badge for uh, doing the things with the granite state. So. The Eagle Scout extra credit <laughs> here. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah. in, During a pandemic. <laughs> but the, also yeah. the accomplishment is working on your Eagle Scout this, this early. And you know, we see a lot of you know, juniors and seniors and you're a freshman. And that's yeah. just, that's and I just, I can't let it go unnoted because I've been on a lot of committees of Eagle Scout community for us. And that's, that's truly. Thank you so much. Really, you know, dedication. You're, you're, you're going to do great things. So we look forward to seeing all that you're going to do. Thank you so much. Thanks, Shannon. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I apologize. We don't have a full committee, but I, I, it's great to see. It's great to see the end result. Anything we are working on it. I do have Maureen on the phone right now. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hi, Maureen. Oh, it's been quite a day. <laughs> right. Thank you, Keyshawn. I think right. you're set unless you're inclined to come and listen to us. But um, you're, thank you guys so <laughs> much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank, yes, yeah, thank, you, thank you for your presentation. Good luck. Have it's a nice good night. You. Thank you so good much. Luck. You too. So, 
Do we want to go back and approve the minutes from well, uh, last Maureen, month? Maureen's not on yet. She's okay. trying to okay. get on, apparently. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I, have, I have her on my telephone right now, so she's been listening yep. to all of Keyshawn's presentation. Um, she's just trying to make this work with her computer. And um, her, her phone, yes. And um, she's having some difficulty. She's trying to get the person who helps her uh, to come over, okay. but she's not home. <clears throat> I just I kicked my head. Okay, so why don't we well, move on and we'll see if she gets on later. And if not, yeah. we can always do minutes later. That's fine. Okay. So no Christine this evening, Correct. Matt? Is that clear? Um, all right. Okay. So we have an update from yourself or Tracy? Uh, or? Tracy, I think, was going to talk about the dog park. Thank you. Oh, you're muted, Tracy. Tracy, you're muted. Her house. She's up to the street. There, we, there go. we go. Um, Abby, I have been asked if Maureen can run up to your house because you're right up the street. <laughs> Abby, yeah. go for it. Abby. Abby. Hello? Am I frozen? Yeah. Um, maybe you were frozen. That might have been it. Uh, Maureen wanted to know, do you want her to come to you? Okay. Um, Maureen will be here. She's got her person coming. I'm going to leave her on here so that she can listen to the meeting. Okay. 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 So okay. back Back to the dog park. Um, we have a dog park balance right now of 1762.59. Uh, dog park is still in pretty good condition at this point. A um, little wet right now, but we don't have the same drainage problems that we were having in the past. Um, I think probably because this year we didn't have nearly as much snow as we've been having. Uh, but there is there is a little bit of a line. That's a quasi river that's coming from the small dog to the large dog side, which is pretty much typical. We haven't had the same ice patch that we usually have, but again, I think that's a lot because we haven't had a lot of snow. Um, otherwise, it's doing pretty good. People are doing well. We're getting a lot of new people coming in, joining up with our dog park uh, Facebook page. And um, we got a new person who came in from Nashua, as a matter of fact, when I was there last weekend and brought his uh, Labrador. Um, so he was excited to have a dog park that was nearby. Uh, but otherwise, all is all is well. We've got um, doggy, you know, relief bags, shall we say, but we could always use more. And just a reminder to everyone who uses the dog park, we love that you come there. We love for you to use the dog park and have your dogs play nicely. Just pick up after your pups, please. <laughs> well said, Tracy. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Mr. Kasparius, we have some new business, huh? Right. So one of the, one second. one of the, the, you know, I had my budget presentation with the council last week, which went really well. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But one of the questions that came up um, during that presentation was asking about kind of what do we charge for people to use our fields? Um, you know, part of the discussion um, came about because in the next five years or so, we've got a couple of sizable um, improvement projects to our fields and the, and the count, town council's kind of like, oh, let's think about maybe we ought to start trying to save for some of this a little bit more um, if there's a way to do that. Um, and I'll talk about those projects in a second. But um, so they asked me to kind of research what other communities are charging and kind of look at where that is compared to what we're charging. Um, now for Merrimack, we do not charge any town-based team. So that's groups that are from Merrimack that are 80% residents um, to use our athletic field. So that's NYA, that's schools, that's, um, you know, John Smith's soccer team, you know, whoever it is, you know, um, if 80% of them are from Merrimack and they usually have to prove, send me their rosters to show that, oh, here comes Maureen. Um, then they get the resident rate, you know, the resident uh, structure, which means they end up being free. Um, for So for right now, we charge $30 a day for a field without lights on it, or $125 a day for a field with I'm lights. I'm on, you can hang up. 
<laughs> Hi, Maureen. Hi, Maureen. I'm sorry. It's okay, okay, honey. I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I was. I had the baby over here. I forgot. You know, yeah, it was I'm like, ah. Uh. All right. I didn't All miss right? too much. Uh, I listened so, on the phone. No. Um, we hardly have a call. At any rate, now we, so, have, now we have a call. Yep, we'll get to that after. We'll go back to it after. But um, so I will point out that we don't get a lot of revenues from kind of non-resident groups. Again, between MYA and kind of our in-town leagues, they take up ninety percent of the field available field space anyway. But we do get some, most of which is adult softball, um, and then kind of a few random rentals here and there. Sometimes businesses will book or you know those kinds of things. But it's it's mostly kind of adult soccer, adult uh, softball, those kinds of things. And we, in a normal year, non-COVID, we might bring in 6,500 bucks a year in kind of rental income based on those fees. Um, and, and as I said, some of the projects that we've already kind of identified in the next five years in our CIP plan, um, we've, we've tentatively talked about irrigation at Wasserman Park and Rick will attest to how dusty the uh, field down there gets with with uh, football down there, um, even though football is the only group down there. I mean, it's just kind of a dust bowl because it's it just dries out and there's not a lot of water. Um, so we've talked about irrigation there. Um, in 2023, 2024, we have a placeholder right now, hopefully for new fields at Fields Farms, which I mentioned to you guys last year as a possibility. It's still not a, a definite, but it's still a placeholder at this point. Um, that, that uh, you know, might happen. Um, and then in 24, 25, we're looking at having to replace the lights at Martell Field, um, which are nearing the end of their lifespan. And those three projects alone are a couple hundred thousand dollars of, of improvement, wow. not to mention just kind of general field improvements anyway. So as I said, the council wanted me to kind of get a sense of the market and see how our fees look at and, and compared to everybody else. And so I'm gonna share my screen here for a second um where's my i was a can everybody see my screen yes yes okay yep. um i was able to kind of gather this information just over the last couple of days so tonight's just going to be an overview and then when we meet in february we'll kind of talk about this um in more in depth but here's kind of 14 communities um and one of the things that stands out to me right away is we are the only community that that charges that charges a by the day fee, pretty much everybody else has an hourly fee. Um, wow. And, you know, so $30 a day versus $30 an hour is a big <laughs> difference. Now I don't want to dump on those adult sports leagues, you know, all at once. They have to roll this out slowly and give them time to prepare for it. But, but um, that jumps out at me right away. Um, the communities that don't charge are tend to be smaller Raymond Sandown. Um, Atkinson, you know, but most of the larger communities of our size, they are charging. Um, things are kind of all over the place in terms of what they charge and how they charge, you know, some are, you know, 25 bucks an hour for a resident and 50 or 75 for a non-resident. Some are for-profit versus non-profit. Um, you know, so they're kind of all over the place. And like I said, I've just, I've, it's taken me from Thursday until today, just to get this much gathered. Um, so I don't have a whole lot of, I haven't had a whole lot of time to kind of digest this and come up with a recommendation. Um, but you look at somebody like Keen, you know, Keen only charge does a half day and a full day, you know, 75 and 150. But if it's a league or a tournament on top of that half day or full day fee, they're charging a $1,500 flat rate fee for that tournament to also exist. So, I mean, so, I mean, there's a lot of big numbers out there. Um, and so we're the, when I looked, it looks like 2010 was the last time the town raised its fees. Um, so to me, it, you know, we're probably overdue. Um, and as I said, tonight's just kind of a, a first look at this. Um, and what I will do before our next meeting, I'm going to keep gathering information from other communities but then when we meet uh, in february when i send the february agenda i'll send you kind of the, the updated scale so you have kind of a week to look at it and 
and think about it and then we can have that discussion plus we'll have more hopefully have more members here um but does anybody have any kind of initial thoughts um other than what i've said at this point we can make some good money <laughs> if you put the prices up <laughs> it, it's certainly it's certainly worth all those discussions because time gets away from us for sure and especially with fields farm you know there's some good hope out there so we want to keep the numbers going hi maureen the only thing that i wanted to add to it was it's kind of the same concept of you know massachusetts and new hampshire and taxes we don't want to outprice ourselves either we want people to feel like they can come and use our fields but yeah. we don't want to outprice them and then lose that possible yeah. income as well. Mm -hmm. um, although again, our fields are booked, you know, spring and fall, our book fields are booked solid. Um, and so even if we come up with a recommendation for the council that's on the lower end of what everybody else is doing, I think we'd still be okay. Um, but again, I'd want to give those leagues, you know, um, there's a, um, Men's softball league that's at Martell and Key most weekends uh, with tournaments. And, you know, they're probably booking, I don't know, 18 out of 24 weekends or 18 out of 24 Saturdays over the weekend. But I don't want to, I don't want to surprise them with that, you know, hey, your bill just tripled, you know, from what it normally is, that kind of thing. So um, I think it's going to take a little while to get through, you know, it'll go through us, you know, probably to the council. If we come up with something in February, it'll go to the council late February, maybe March. Um, it might be one of these things where we delay implementation either till the fall or to even to next spring, you know, just to give them time to, to prepare for that kind of, depending on what that jump looks like. Um, again, just something to think about. And the other thing we'll look at in February related to this is we'll probably just look at the policy in, in general, because again, that wasn't updated since 2010 either. Um, and there's probably some things in there that, that probably need to, to, to be updated. Other thoughts on field rentals at this point? Uh, Matt, Shannon, Shannon uh, a couple things I think we want to look at is, you know, finding, I, I completely agree with what Tracy is saying as far as pricing ourselves out and making, um, I think, greater challenges for those groups that are using it. So, mm -hmm. you know, we definitely want an inclusive community and, we don't want to price them out. That said, um, I think that there's definite value in quantifying um, what mm -hmm. you know the fair market value of the um, of the usage of that field would be. Um, you know, using an aggregate average, basically, mm -hmm. of, of what right. we have, you know, around us, and say, find a happy medium. Say we may need to do some, you know, nominal increases, but realize this is what the market charges, and we're trying to be as fair as possible, but find that happy medium. But again, you know, I think what you're going to find, it's going to be very sobering for these people that you're probably, when you're talking about the facilities and how you've struggled to maintain, build all of those things because of budget constraint, how sometimes our own operations are probably uh, creating prohibitions on that as well. Things where if you could have had a uh, capital reserve fund, all of those kind of things, where those monies could be allocated to those funds to be able to, to expand infrastructure, um, address the field's needs that we do have, the um, evolution of sports that have gotten very aggressive like lacrosse in the last 10 years, um, and how you know we do need to address the greater good. Um, and it will take everyone uh, giving a bit back to do so. But I think it's a campaign. I think you know it's it's not just a, a, uh, an assessment, but it's a campaign with that has data behind it. And I think that you have a lot um, of good data to work with to tell a, a strong story about um, about what we could do with those fees, that it's not just a, a reason to charge them, but what what the long, right. short and long-term values will be from doing it. So I think that's so important to be able to put the story around that so people kind of buy into to the adjustments. Because I think so often the adjustments go out without any real um, reasoning behind it. It just looks like they're fleecing us for more, you know? And I think that's to Tracy's point. Um, but I think that we can absolutely do a great job of framing out what, you know, what we want to offer, what the town is, what the town needs and is asking for, and what we could, how we could actually deliver on those, those needs if we had, um, had those fees to support um, 
the, the expansion and, uh, and maintenance of, of the fields that we have. So. And one of the things that I'm planning on doing, you know, between now and that next meeting is obviously reaching out to those groups to let them know that we are talking about this and, and kind of inviting them to be part of the conversation and, and so that they can see kind of the challenges and maybe we'll directly invite them to this meeting in February. I'm not sure yet, but, um, but they'll certainly be kind of have input into that, you know, um, because it's, it's two or three groups that kind of are most of those rentals that we do get those, you know, $6,000 a year. And again, we're not there to, okay. we're not throwing it to try and, screw anybody over we're not just trying to raise fees because we can it's you know there is you know legitimate needs you know um so more on that to come in february um but like i said wanted to just give you a it came up last week in the council meeting so wanted to at least get it on the agenda so you had advance notice that it's that we're going to have that discussion in february and so that's on it for new business laura you're muted again but I guess I'm on next anyway with my report, so I'll, I'll just keep going if that's okay. You're, you're still muted, Laura. Hi, am I, can you hear me yet? There you go. <laughs> yeah. I can now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, go for it, Matt. All right. So, um, so um, as I said earlier, the budget presentation last week went really well. It was on the hot seat for an hour, which is about average for us. Um, we really only had kind of two line items that we were looking at to change, you know, in our budget from last year to this year. Um, the first one, which we talked about, um, I think at our December meeting and certainly earlier in the fall, which was one based on some of the issues we had last summer with, you know, um, waterfront areas, um, and, and the fact that we are finally moving ahead with renovating the Wasserman Park Beach. Um, trying to restore lifeguard coverage at Wasserman Park Beach, which we haven't had in 10 plus years. Um, and the council seemed receptive to that. Um, I got hardly any questions on it, which is always a good sign, I guess. Um, the second one um, in our budget was related to uh, facility improvements. Um, one related to the waterfront was replacing our docks, which are 29 years old and at the end of their lifespan. Um, you know, we had that proposal for, you know, it's $26,000 to replace the docks with kind of modern materials that'll last another 30 years. Um, again, I didn't get a whole lot of feedback from them. And so hopefully that means they're, all, um, they're in support. Um, they're, usually when they're negative or asking a hundred questions, then we, we don't feel real good, confident about it. But I felt pretty good about it after the fact. So, you know, we'll see what happens when they make their final deliberations. But the other project was improvements to my office here at the park. Um, my building needs a new roof, which is $4,800. And then the, you know, the other one is an ADA access ramp. Um, my, my office is a public building, just like town hall or any other public buildings in town. And um, not only do we not have a ramp, but the step into the office is also technically too tall. Um, and I got a lot of interesting feedback that we probably spent 20 minutes. Well, could you move your office to town hall or could you move it to the function hall or <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, um, I guess we'll have to wait and see, you know, when they make their deliberations in February, how that comes through. Um, the ramp on my office, it's longer, it'll be longer and, and, um, there's more of a drop than the one that Keyshawn just built for us um, on the day camp. The day camp office was relatively flat to begin with. Um, my office, it's got a it's got a long run that it would need, so it's going to be about ten thousand dollars just for the ramp. That's assuming that you know that's contracting it out, obviously. But even if we had a scout come through and do it, it'd probably still be five. So it'd probably be more than what a scout would be able to fundraise for, and you know, so we'd, we'd have to. Um, do all that so again nothing really jumped out on the budget um, um i don't have the, the calendar in front of me of when the next um when they're doing their final deliberations it's usually mid-february uh, i want to say february 11th but i don't have that date in front of me but um so when we meet in february i guess we'll have more information on that um yeah. moving ahead to um, winter items um yeah. 
The ice skating rink initially opened last Monday, January 11th, and was open for the week. And then Friday, we had to close it because it got warm. It was like 45 degrees on Friday, and then it rained all weekend or all day Saturday, and it all melted. Um, so the rink is closed. Um, for anybody listening, our website and our Facebook page, because we do, do post openings and closures of the rink. Um, and, and there's also signage down there. So if the rink is already marked as closed, we do ask people to stay off it. Um, it took probably two weeks longer than it normally does to open the rink because people kept going on the ice, even though it was posted as closed. And then they'd step on it, they'd break through, and then we'd have to wait in, you know, two, three more days for the ice to refreeze. So um, we're hoping by Friday it'll be cold. It'll stay cold enough. Um to refreeze and be good for this coming weekend, but we'll see. Um, PBW checks it every day and they're adding extra layers of, of water to freeze up um, every day. So, you know, wait and see on, on the rink. Um, school vacation week after our successful December program, we do, we are now open registration for February vacation. Um, we've actually got more kids already registered for February than we had combined in December. So that's a good sign. Um, but for anybody listening at home, it's a um, eight to five program. It's sports games, arts and crafts, outdoor play. Um, you know, we're based in the function hall at Wasserman Park. It's $45 a day and they get a hot lunch uh, prepared by our camp cook and the program's run by a lot of my summer camp staff, including my camp director, Ashley. Um, we do offer sibling discounts um, for families with multiple children, and we follow all the state of New Hampshire guidelines for, for child care for COVID-19. Um, so, for example, you know, when we're indoors, everybody has to wear a mask, um, in, which really wasn't an issue um, during vacation week. Um, we are limited to a total of um, 16 kids a day um, based on the size of our facility and staffing and in child care guidelines so um, we're probably about a little over not quite two-thirds full yet so we do have spaces if people are interested they should sign up sooner than later um, winter carnival is coming up um, on saturday february 20th it will be similar to our halloween event it will be entirely outdoors um, and similar to halloween it will be a um, people will have to register in advance for a free ticket um, so we'll have uh, for a specific time slot. Um, so you'll sign, you know, attend at, you know, your family arrives at 1.15 and then, you know, you go through and you're working, walking in kind of a designated pathway through the, the event. Um, we have not opened registration up for families to register just yet. We're hoping to do that next week. Right now we're still working on um, getting uh, businesses and community organizations to sign up. So um, but hopefully the attendee registration will open next week. Um, but we, again, just for those watching at home, we encourage people to uh, pay attention to the Facebook page and our website, um, and we'll post those updates as they come. Um, so that's it for winter. Um, when I had, moving on to summer, when I had my budget hearing last week, one of the last things I asked them was a request from the council for permission to open up summer camp registration. We normally open this time of year and usually it's just kind of an automatic thing. Um, and one of my concerns was they were gonna make us wait until you know February or March or, you know, initially we were hopeful that the, uh, the state was gonna release the updated summer camp guidelines um, in November. Um, I sit on a task force with the New Hampshire um, camp directors association and kind of representing all the municipal camps and so we had been working with department of health and human services in the fall and we were supposed to meet with them right before thanksgiving and then obviously all the numbers spiked and they said okay we're gonna put you on hold we'll get back to you later now we're in this january february time frame so i don't know yet um but um like i said historically we do open registration now and one of my concerns was going to be if the council made us wait until, say, February or March or April, is that, you know, um, for example, YMCA Camp Sargent is opening next week. Camp Panema over at Hampshire Hills has already opened. Melody Pines in Manchester. 
opens next week, but they usually sell out within days, you know, so all our kind of direct competitors open either last week or within the next couple of weeks. And so if we were a month behind them, it would turn away a lot of our families. So um, fortunately, I did get permission from the council to open camp registration up um, and registration opened at 3.30 this afternoon. Um, and as of about two hours yeah. ago, we already had seven or eight families uh, registered mm -hmm. for eight or nine weeks already. Um, so that was great to see. Um, a, um, and so we're, we're happy to have all that. Um, the, the caveat from the council was that I do have to go back to them when the new guidelines do come out um, and kind of report on what they are and how we're going to meet all of those safety guidelines. Um, you know, and they'll make their final decisions in, you know, again, February, March, whenever those guidelines do come out. Um, now, one of the things that we're counting on, um, like one of the requirements they changed for childcare this fall was, um, you know, similar to summer camps last summer, it was you could have groups of 10 counting staff um, and groups of 10 counting staff last summer, but it would have been really tough financially since, you know, we were already had already taken registrations and, and, you know, we couldn't turn around and raise fees on people. Um, but for childcare in the fall, they raised it to 20. Now that brings us up into ranges where we normally are for the summer anyway, um, you know, 16 kids in a group, 18 kids in a group. Um, and so as long as they make that change already um, for, for summer camps, that solves 90% of the problems we would have had last summer. Um, so we're looking forward to that potentially coming. Again, camps are based largely outside versus daycare are largely indoors. So we expect that change to occur. The other one is obviously masks. You know, masks were kind of new and scary for everybody in, in April, May, and June last year. And so nobody really was quite sure how that was all gonna play out. You know, and even we, the state had left the mask requirement kind of up to the individual camps on whether to require it and, and who, because the, the regulation at the time said, um, for those who, um, who, those who are mature enough, essentially, could, you know, should wear a mask. And we kind of hemmed and hawed, and we were kind of looking at eight-year-olds and up. Um, and other camps, you know, YMCA Camp Sergeant decided that no campers should have to wear masks last summer, um, but their staff did. Um, I think this year it's a lot more commonplace. Um, looking ahead to this summer, I think we're still looking at masks in place for um, – for indoor activities, um, unless something significantly improves between now and July and June. Um, but I think it's less, much less of an issue than it was, you know, nine months ago. Um, again, YMCA Camp Sergeant had 275 kids a week and had no problems. So we feel confident that we can run with our normal, you know, 130 kids a week and, and be in good shape. Um, so again, camp registration is open for those listening at home. Um, and uh, so, you know, registration is open and ongoing. We encourage you to register and get on the list. Um, and with that said, we are recruiting for summer staff now at this point. Um, so if anybody out there is looking for a summer job, um, we have a little bit of everything open. Um, lifeguards, swim instructors, camp counselors, activity specialists, um, maintenance, kind of everything under the sun. Um, so reach out to us um, at Parks and Rec if you're looking for a summer job. Um, and then the last thing I will mention just is Easter. Our Easter egg hunt is tentatively scheduled for March 27th. Um, last year, Easter was canceled because it was right when COVID hit. And I've got 10,000 Easter eggs sitting in my closet here that I really <laughs> want to get rid of. Um, and, and so we're trying to figure out how to do that right now. Um, Unlike Winter Carnival in Halloween, you can't really do a time ticket entry because how does that work, you know? But I also can't have 50 kids come in and gather in a field and all run for the same 50 eggs because that kind of defeats the purpose. So I don't know if we're going to do, I'm not sure what we're going to do yet. We're, we're talking with our, our partner, we partner with Merrimack Friends and Family on that event. And so we're kind of talking with them on how that might work. Um, we also might do something completely different, like a take-home scavenger hunt, and maybe the Easter Bunny delivers 
a, st a bag of Easter eggs and a scavenger hunt materials to your houses in town? I'm, I don't know yet. Um, like I said, I got 10,000 Easter eggs, though, so we're going to do something. I just don't, I don't know what yet. Um, and uh, so that's that's what I got going on here. <laughs> Excellent. Now, I'm having trouble with my mute saying I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear yes. you. Now we can't. Your lips are moving. <laughs> You're muted it's again, like, Laura. There you it's go. Like, oh, is that all right now? Yes. <laughs> it's saying one thing and doing something else. Were there some other department updates that you wanted to refer to, Matt, after that? No, I didn't have anything else. Okay. I, do, I always put that as a placeholder because usually I forget something. Well, yeah. I just want to thank you for all your persistence and yeah. adaptions and flexibility and creativity through this whole year. My goodness. Um, so, Maureen, hi. Welcome to the party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll have some parties today. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so what's up? All right. First, I'd like to uh, thank Tracy for searching me out. Yeah, I, was, I was having a senior moment, <laughs> but I okay. finally, I finally got my helper who ran across the street. Thank God she's home, and all she yeah. did was press one button. I was pressing a hundred buttons. I could I never get it. So, what are you gonna do? I promise, Matt, I promise Less Matt in February, I will be yeah. early. <laughs> okay. Uh, seniors me aren't too. really, they're not getting back together at all. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, a few seniors have been meeting at the Merrimack Village Outlets for a walk on Good. Tuesdays and Thursdays. So uh, there's about 10, you know, 5, 10, 15 sometimes. But yeah. that's about all. Nobody's really everyone's wanting to get together but it's going to be a very strange group because we're losing a lot of members yes, um, I know. four of them last month passed away so it'll be a yeah. different different faces that's for sure yeah. but hopefully we can all get together pretty soon so that's it for me well thanks for being here i appreciate it yeah. <laughs> keep <you>. warm <laughs> oh yeah i'm toasty there you go hi abby thanks for joining us Hi, thank you for Abby. having me. Hi. All well, right. Oh, no, I appreciate that you're consistent. <laughs> How's it so, going? Um, things are going good. We're back in school. Um, so we're going back to the hybrid schedule rather than full remote, which means kids are going to school two days a week again, which is nice, even if I don't like getting up early. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And in terms of news, obviously, most big events still aren't happening right now, but there is an early college planning presentation on the 26th of January from 6 to 7, and it's directed for grades 9 and 10, and there's a registration link on the Merrimack High School website if you're interested. And that was for what grades? 9 and 10? Uh, for, yeah, for 9 and 10, although anyone is... Oh welcome right. but it's targeted for nine and ten okay perfect and what and just tell me again that, it was college what's much happening okay thank you very much and that was for college uh, it is the like, early college okay thank you I early college you. planning early college thank you very much and it's, so it begins great thank you abby good luck and uh band still playing at all band yeah. going at all it is. Yeah. I have you. Yes, it is. We have rehearsed. Thank you very much, Anne. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Rick Greenier, good evening. Good evening, Laura. Thank you. You're um, everything's going well overall at the Merrimack Youth Association. Um, we currently have lacrosse uh, registration open, and I expect softball registration to open by February 1st officially cancel our basketball and wrestling seasons for obvious reasons yeah. um, but we look forward to next year or maybe something oh, yeah. unique come summertime um, my heart goes out to all those basketball players and wrestlers that really do live for this time of the year but of course it's out of our control and um, as always uh, parents and in our viewing public and Get more information at the Merrimack Youth Association.com website. 
and that's about all I have right now. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Okay, Ms. Shannon, okay. Mrs. Barnes, how are you tonight? We're doing well. So we have finalized um, the budget uh, from a school board perspective. It's going over to the budget committee uh, for 2021-22. Uh, we will be finalizing our warrant articles at our meeting on February 1st. And of course that all influences things like facilities. Uh, so uh, we will be working toward that. Uh, we are still working on um, obviously the second half of the year. Uh, we had a very lengthy meeting last night on that and how it will uh, impact instruction. So we are vetting ideas, um, have, you know, we kind of went around the table and uh, we are at this point uh, between now and February 1st, looking forward to the input of our constituents, our, our community uh, to see what makes sense um, going forward and taking of course their concerns into account as, as, as much as we, you know, as much as we can, obviously, you know, the goal is to have a, the best education we can in the safest environment. And um, we are, we're trying everything to, you know, trying all the angles to, to see what we can do to make that happen. Uh, so it's been a, a kind of a wild couple of months because of all of, all of the planning for that, the budgeting and everything else. So we are um, looking forward to um, vaccines coming for our teachers. Um, so, and with that, I think it's going to make it a lot easier uh, for um, for what we want to accomplish in school. So, uh, so fingers crossed that uh, you know we can get the priority moved up. So, the board at last night's meeting um, decided that we wanted to have a letter written from the board uh, by our chair, Cindy Gualiumi, to be sent to the governor, um, requesting that teachers and school staff uh, get moved up in the priority list uh, for vaccination so our kids can come back to school full time in the most safest possible environment. So, most safe possible yeah. environment. So, I definitely used an English uh, wrongness there. And, and uh, good news is I don't think Mark McLaughlin can see these meetings. So, the English I'll major. Give <laughs> And you always present well. I, I, you're amazing, and thank you for your commitment to the Miramax schools. Because yeah, and sh well, Shannon, we thank you for can. thinking of teachers also. Absolutely, it was. Absolutely. I'm not going to take the credit. It was the board that it. It was uh, something that Lori Rothhouse has to be put on the agenda. But I wholeheartedly agree with uh, with the sentiment, and uh, was happy to second the motion. So, thank we you. appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, and uh, not seeing a lot or anybody. They're pretty busy themselves. Uh, are there any other comments from the committee or discussions or questions or anybody else out there? Our next meeting will be on February 17th, was it, Matt? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And with the Winter Carnival coming up. Anybody else have any other input or comments or thoughts at... Um, Oh, we just 755. Yeah, we just have to do the minutes because we tabled them because we didn't Thank have a you. that time. Great. See, keeping us going here. All right, I'm looking. I hope you've all uh, had a chance to look at the minutes that Michelle so nicely does every month. <laughs> um, I'd like to make a few minutes is written. Please do. I'll Thank second that. Shannon. Second? I'll second. Thank you, Tracy and Shannon. Thank you, Shannon and Tracy. I appreciate it. All those in favor of accepting the minutes from 12, 15, 20, 12, 16, 20. Aye. Bye. 19. Aye. Thank you. Bye. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> and I just take it that's a, um, Six, yeah. a done deal. We can, and I'll take the next motion. <laughs> to approve the minutes that have been approved and the next motion will be. Actually, hold on one second. Nope. Do, we uh -oh. to, do we need to vote on uh, Mr. Uh, Kashan's project? Uh, or do we need no. To do any no, it was no just, I think it was just a, a wrap up. Just an update. Update. The project's already done. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anything left before we closed out the meeting. I don't oh, want to yeah. lose Maureen in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> or me, or any of us. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> <This is> fine, <laughs> Maureen. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. So I'll motion to uh, adjourn. I'll second. Thank you. There you go. The girls are out. All right. Thank you. All those in favor of adjourning on this cold January, interesting Aye. day of January Aye. 20. 29 Aye, degrees. Bye. Bye. All right. Nice to see you guys. Under an hour tonight. See you all.
yeah, I'm, we're working, even with the technology. <laughs> it says tap to speak. My microphone is muted, but I'm, anyway, I don't know. Okay, thank you, friends, for joining us. Good night, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. All right, good night. Bye. Merrimack TV is committed to our community. From gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of town and school board meetings to updates on town services and projects, we aim to keep you connected. Uh, good morning, I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments, so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook.